Welcome back inside the UC Health Training Center for another episode of Broncos Now. Team reporter and host Sydney Jones here. And coming up on today's episode, we'll hear from interim head coach Jerry Rosberg as he takes a look back at Sunday's loss in Kansas City. Plus, Broncos lead writer Eric DeLala joins the show for a game recap. All that and more coming up. Here at the UC Health Training Center today, we heard from interim head coach Jerry Rossberg as he reflected on the Broncos' 27-24 loss to the Kansas City Chiefs at Arrowhead this past Sunday. Take a listen. We've been through a lot around here, and our players have, coaches have, fans have. We recognize that, and we say thanks. We're grateful for all the challenges we've had because it's put it in a place to improve ourselves. And we've taken that attitude, <clears throat> and for all that is to come, yes, bring it on. We're looking forward to it. We're prepared. We're going to make the best of the situation that we are dealt with here. And I really had a good vibe today when I was with the team. Um, best way to describe it, I think, is that they're really disappointed, but they're certainly not discouraged. I challenged them to look at the tape with their coaches, make the corrections necessary. And for all the good things that are on that tape, it was not good enough. So. For all that we were striving to be yesterday, we want to do that and better. We need to improve. And I need to improve as a coach to try to make that happen. And I'm committed to doing that. So we're going to have a great week of practice. I'm really looking forward to getting back with these guys on Wednesday. Things are early part of this week now are a little bit more normal for them and the coaching staff. I think our preparation will be a little better on point. We made too many mistakes down the stretch that hurt us and some during the early parts of the game as well. Jerry Rosberg also went on to talk about Russell Wilson's performance versus the Chiefs on Sunday and the success he had. I liked the way it was set up by our offensive coordinator, Justin Outen, and also our passing game coordinator, Clint Kubiak. And we had uh, lengthy discussions on what this was uh, going to look like. And while I will say we got started down that path, I'm not. Just, I'm certain we're not at a finished product yet. but. Um, We've been taking in consideration a lot of things when we make our offensive game plans. Of course, the opponent and what, where we have players at certain positions. And uh, Russell Wilson is at the apex of that. You know, what does Russell, Russell do well and how can we assist him? I think I said that in here last week. We want to we do the things that he does well and we want him to be fully bought in to those things. And I really believe that happened last week. And as I said earlier in this, this gathering, <clears throat> we have to, whatever we did yesterday, it needs to be better next week. Rosberg also talked about what it meant to be on the sideline on Sunday for the first time as a head coach and how it was different than he expected. You know, you never really know until you get there, right? That's true with anything, any new endeavor. <clears throat> and uh, when I walked out there, after all the things that I had to do in the locker room, usually as a special teams coach, I'm in there early guy. I go out in the field early and I watch all the specialists and I keep an eye on the other team and and so forth, but now that I have these other responsibilities, I couldn't get out there until late. So when my son and I walked out on the field, it was like, wow, oh, there it is. So, but it was, it was a great feeling. It was a, it was a humbling moment, a great gratitude that I could walk out there and experience what that was like. <clears throat> but I will say this, during the game, I felt like I was coaching football. And I, I know, I've, as I said, I mean, I didn't sleep a whole lot last, last night when I got back, but I, I've been thinking about that. And during the game, I felt completely into the game and relaxed. And somebody asked me here last week, I think, are you nervous? And during the game, I was, I was coaching just like I was coaching before. I just had more on my plate. And I want to thank all the coaches that uh, put up with me on the headset yesterday, I guess the best way to put it. I, <clears throat> I made a number of uh, switching errors, let's call them. On my, on my microphone and I would find myself in different places at different times and I would be, have to be slapped back to my appropriate place. And I want to thank the game management team, Brad Miller and Mark Thews too. They were a great help along with Eric Haithcock, my assistant. I thought overall I, I made some decisions that I would reconsider, I guess is the best way to say that. But overall, to your point, I felt like it was uh, where I belonged, real frankly. And looking ahead, the Broncos have never gone winless in the AFC West, excluding a strike-shortened season back in 1982. So Jerry Rosberg recognizes the importance of winning this game on a Sunday versus Chargers. 
I don't care who we're playing this weekend. It's still going to be really important. I don't think you can ramp up the importance of this game just because it's the the Chargers. It doesn't register with me. Perhaps I don't have a real good feel for the West, but divisional games are always really important in the National Football League, and that should be and is a goal of most teams in this league because that's how you get to the playoffs. That's the natural path. The past games that this team has suffered through in the AFC West, I recognize, but that's not where I'm looking. I'm looking at this game as an opportunity for our players, our fans to enjoy a win. I want to see our guys in the locker room celebrate with one another. I want to have them a good, have, I want to allow them to have a good feeling when they leave the locker room and go see their families. That's my goal. Now joining me here on today's episode of Broncos Now is a Broncos lead writer, Eric Delala. Eric, Happy New Year. Thanks for joining me again today. Yeah, of course. A new year, new studio. I know. Thought about changing up for the new year. I like Might it. Might as well. I like it. Well, Eric, it was a hard-fought battle at Arrowhead on Sunday. You know, the Broncos, they took the lead a couple times throughout the game, but of course weren't able to get the win. First game for Jerry Osberg as interim head coach. Just, I guess, what were kind of your main takeaways from the game? Yeah, I thought the Broncos were more fundamentally sound Mm -hmm. than they had been. Um, I think they showed toughness. I thought they showed fight. Um, They played extremely hard, obviously. Mm -hmm. It'd be really easy at this point in the season to just mail it in and say, hey, we got got two weeks left to go. Let's just get to the finish line. Did not look like the Broncos were doing that. Even playing a team that's still competing for the number one seed in the AFC, um, you know, special teams was better defensively they've looked good all year and kind of bounced back there offensively they had a mindset they had an identity that I really appreciated Um, obviously you got to get over the finish line and you can't make some of the mistakes the Broncos did in terms of Mm -hmm. leaving points on the board at the end of the first half throwing an interception uh, that the Chiefs take over in your red zone you know Mm -hmm. there's still things to clean up there but overall I think they embraced the the old school kind of tough mentality that Jerry Rosberg tried to bring to Denver this week. Right. Well, I thought the offense, you know, found a good rhythm um, early in the game up until, you know, the third quarter there when Cortland Sutton was called for the offensive pass interference. How did you see kind of that shift things for the offense? And, I mean, what a questionable call that was. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That was uh, not a good call. No. Uh, just, <laughs> just straight out, uh, Cortland Sutton had two guys on him, was able to make an incredible catch. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll get back to that in just a second because yeah. I think it's impressive what the Broncos offense did before that I mean we've seen this team try to take shots throughout the year down the field they haven't necessarily had the weapons to you know either guys haven't been healthy or the Mm -hmm. offensive line hasn't been able to hold up Um, for whatever reason it hasn't worked and so I liked that the Broncos said we're going to run the football we're going to let Russell Wilson use his legs here yeah we're going to you know we're going to control the clock and keep Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs off the field uh, there was that drive, the Broncos' first scoring drive. They just got a field goal, but they held the ball for more than six minutes. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's an identity, and it can change week to week in terms of who you're playing, but you saw an identity with Justin Outen calling plays up in the box. Jerry Rosberg wanted Clint Kubiak on the sideline to be there with Russell Wilson. There was just reasoning behind what the Broncos did, and so I thought mm-hmm. that um, that's why they were so effective. And But like you mentioned, said that, that call on Cortland Sutton was a big deal. Uh, the Broncos were up. I believe four points at that point. They would have had the ball first and ten on the forty-yard line, able to go in, drain some more time off the clock, potentially make it a, a six or a uh, a larger lead. Mm-hmm. Um, and instead, the Chiefs get the ball back. They score. Right. Russell Wilson does throw a bad interception. Uh, the protection was not great on that play, but obviously you can't have a turnover there. The Chiefs score again, and before you know it, it's a, a 14-0 run really quickly. And the Broncos did respond. They could have laid down at that point and just kind of said, hey, we're done here. So I was impressed right. that they kept fighting, but obviously that was a critical moment in the game. Yeah, well, looking at the Broncos' final drive of the game, you know, they were down by three, had a chance to to take the lead and win it. But, of course, we saw Graham Glasgow snap the ball a bit early. Russ wasn't really ready for it, then took a sack. What did you kind of see on that final drive there in that play? Yeah, I mean, they, they had a chance there. It was, well, I think, third and five. So yeah. they, they decided we're going to run the football here on third down. We're going to give ourselves two plays. Ended up in that fourth and two scenario. I, again, I like the mentality because mm-hmm. earlier in the game, the Broncos – had a similar situation where I believe it was third and two and they ran the ball twice, right. uh, pick up the first down. So they tried to do the same thing there. Mm-hmm. Time wasn't an issue at that point. Um, but yeah, just one of those examples of it not quite coming together where mm-hmm. Graham Glasgow was trying to catch somebody off sides. Don't, you don't get the flag. And at that point, the play is just, it's broken before Perfect. it even really begins. So mm-hmm. we heard Russell say, I, I wish we could have that play back. 
Um, right. But hard to fault Graham there because that's what you're trained to do as a, as a center. If you see somebody jump, you snap the ball, so you get the free play, you get the five yards. And hey, if they'd thrown the flag, people would have said, great job, great Graham. Job. That was a great awareness. They got us a free yeah. first down. It, it didn't pay off there. And uh, a little bit of a, a bummer in terms of how the game ends because the Broncos fought so hard. You'd like to see them at least have a chance there to, to kick a field goal or, or maybe even go down and – Take yeah. a take the lead on a touchdown. Certainly. Well, like we mentioned, you know Jerry Rossberg's first game as an interim head coach. It was Justin Allen's first game being the play caller. Eric, what did you just think overall about what they were able to do? Yeah, you know, again, I think the focus on the run game is the biggest thing. Yeah. That if this Broncos offense is going to get things going moving moving forward, I think using Russ as a runner has to be part of that. And Definitely. it doesn't mean it needs to happen all the time, and you don't need to put him in danger. But some of this read option stuff that we saw or his ability to scramble for a touchdown. We, we saw both of them, right? The the first touchdown was a read option where he kept the ball. Great blocks by Eric Saubert mm -hmm. um, to seal the edge yeah. there. Uh, I believe it was Chase, Chase Edmonds, Edmonds who yeah. gets another block to, to spring Russ. And then on the, the last touchdown with about, you know, four minutes ago or something like that, uh, it's a pass play, but mm -hmm. Russ sees that he can take off. He's got time to get to the end zone. Those two things just make this offense so much more dynamic. Um, and so I hope to see, you know, we'll see what this staff looks like, right? I mean, we're, we're kind of speculating about what this could look like moving forward without right. exactly knowing, you know, what is the offensive system going to look like? Who are the mm -hmm. coaches going to be? But I think you saw yesterday that, that was as close, close as Russ has looked to Seattle Russ in a long time. And so I think, you know, using him as a runner has to be part of the plan going forward. Certainly. Yeah, I agree. Eric, you know, it was a full team effort out there on Sunday. So looking at this defense, you know, I thought they did a relatively good job at, you know, containing Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Justin Simmons got his sixth interception on the season, you know, a career high for him. I guess what did you just like about what they were able to do? I mean, they go out there and they're such a consistent group week in and week out. Yeah, I mean, they keep losing guys, right? I, I mean, know. Randy Gregory goes on IR. Baron Browning doesn't play. DJ right. Jones doesn't play. Draymond Jones is gone. They lose to Mari Mathis early in the football game, mm -hmm. and yet still they're playing good football. Playing good. They yeah. give up, uh, you know, an initial scoring drive, but then after that they buckle down. Three drives for the Chiefs in the third quarter, three three and outs. Mm -hmm. uh, they yeah. really, you know, they flustered Mahomes for much of that game. Definitely. And then in the fourth quarter, after the Broncos score the touchdown to cut it back to three. The Broncos go out and get a stop, which, Sydney, we haven't seen them do a lot this year in, in those big moments of getting the ball back for the offense. So I was really right. impressed that they were able to do that. And this is a good unit. Ajiro Evero, we know how good he is as a coordinator. People have spoken this week about how he's got future head coaching potential. Yep. Um, but, yeah, th this group responded. They were as good as advertised. And, again, these guys don't have a lot to play for in terms of the win-loss record, but they're still playing hard. And uh, – mm -hmm. Mahomes, what, I think four interceptions now yeah. against the Broncos, Broncos this season. Broncos. Mm -hmm. um, he struggled, and hopefully, you know, no matter what next year looks like, hopefully they can uh, keep Continue that part that. of it going. For sure. Well, looking at special teams, Eric, you know, Alex Singleton, he forced that fumble on a punt return, and then Ioma Uazarike, you know, had that blocked field goal. I mean, I think that's the best that unit has really looked all season. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, yeah. uh, and Jerry Rosberg, he sat Montreal Washington down. I mean, yeah. a, a tough lesson, I'm sure, for the rookie, but one that Jerry Rosberg must have thought was in the best interest of this football team. Yeah. Uh, Kendall Hinton went back to return kicks, return punts, um, did a solid job. I thought actually had a nice return there on the final drive that gave the Broncos a chance. Um, but yeah, the special teams, it's about effort, it's about buying in, it's about having the right scheme. And Jerry Rosberg suggested that Hey, we, we, we kind of changed <laughs> – lost my game book there. We kind of kind of changed the special team scheme this week, you know, which yeah. is just wild to think about that in one week in you're one trying week, to right. revamp everything. But the Broncos did that. They played hard. That's a, uh, a really good sign moving forward that, again, if you get the right coach in place and the right special teams coordinator in place, that the Broncos can take yeah. a big step forward. Can turn things around quickly. Absolutely. Sure. Well, last one here for you, Eric. You know, final week of the season here, week 18 now – what do you hope to see from this team as they try and just finish the season strong here? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think you want to see the same type of fight, the same yeah. intensity. Um, Jerry Rosberg mentioned a lot of guys bought in to what they were doing. You'd like yeah. to continue to see that this week. Um, would love to get an AFC West win just so that uh, you don't have the first winless AFC West slate for the Broncos in, in decades. Um, mm -hmm. So to be able to avoid that would be a big deal. Definitely. I think, and listen, Two things stood out to me from yesterday's game. Said one is that 
what Russell Wilson said about, hey, when we have all our guys and they have all their guys, I feel really good about our chances. And that's the For truth. Sure. The Broncos went in there against a really good football team mm-hmm. with a highly depleted roster yeah. and still took them to the wire and still looked good enough to beat that's that football point. team. So that's one. And then two, I mentioned a little bit earlier, but just – with a little with a change in coaching and maybe more of this old school type approach yeah. and Russell Wilson playing football that way, mm-hmm. I think you saw what the Broncos can be. And so you get a little bit healthier, you get that Russell Wilson back, mm-hmm. you get a coach in place that's gonna, you know, bring the best out of this team. And I think it's likely the Broncos can have a nice turnaround in twenty twenty three. Yeah. Well, I hope you're right. A lot to look forward to still and you know, with the end of the season and the off season. So we'll Absolutely. see what happens. Yeah. Eric, appreciate your time. Thanks you for coming it. on. Well, that'll do it for today's episode of Broncos Now, Broncos Country. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you meet me right back here on the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube tomorrow for another episode. I will see you all then.